things that I've noticed since winter began is how much earlier in the evening it starts to get dark and how much later in the morning it seems until the sun starts to lighten the day. And so whether it's because it's cold or whether it's because it's dark, we, we tend to go to bed earlier and if we're able, we tend to sleep in longer. And as a result, what you'll notice, certainly throughout the Southern Highlands, is that there are fewer people out at night, um, especially during winter, because the sensible people are at home, either in front of the fire or in bed. And if someone is out at night, it's either because they have a very good reason or because they're going to partake in a nefarious activity. Now, on Monday, we looked at the Apostle Paul's teaching about the last day. And the idea that although we don't know the day or time of Jesus' return, we trust that he will return because that is what he and the scriptures promise. Well, today we'll be encouraged by Paul in knowing that although the precise day or time is a mystery, when Jesus does return, it will not be a surprise to us. We'll pick it up uh, after, immediately after Paul has finished saying that the unbeliever will not be prepared for Jesus' return. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 4. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the dark for this day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. Now, as we saw on Monday, Paul likens the idea of a thief coming at night with the unbeliever who presumes that life will continue uninterrupted until they die. Okay, they simply don't give Jesus a, sec a second thought. And so the idea that Jesus rose from the dead, let alone will return a second time, is something that they dismiss or something that is, is foreign to them. But that is not the case for us, for the believer. Okay, we are not living in darkness, oblivious to the promises of the Bible. We are children of the day who have seen the light of salvation. And we are not only aware that Jesus will return, but we look forward to his return. Paul writes 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 6, So then... Let us not sleep like the rest, but let us stay awake and be self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled and put on the armour of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. The report doesn't go into a lot of detail, but you can see from this passage that there is a clear difference between night and day. Okay, night is where people do things that they wouldn't normally do during the day. Because at night, it's hidden in darkness. The light of the day, however, is when everything is clearly seen. And so the daytime is when people show self-control. And the reason that Paul mentions self-control twice in this passage is because self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's one of the signs that you are living a life of faith. Now, when you exercise self-control, it means that you have control over what you say, what you think, and what you do. When you don't have self-control, you inevitably do or say things that you regret. As followers of Jesus, we develop and grow in self-control because self-control enables us to consider how we live as we wait for Jesus' return. And self-control helps us to better love each other and our neighbour before that happens. And so friends, with that in mind, take a couple of minutes to pray and ask God to help you to show self-control in all areas of life. And pray also that God will move your family and friends who, who don't know Jesus, that he will move them out of darkness, out of the darkness of hopelessness, and into the light of salvation, the light of the day.